I hear the call of the stars. G'day guys, Duckfill here. We're going to have a look at a few more replays from the FX Open Esports Invitational Series number four Korean qualifier. Holy crap, someone give me a medal. That is an epic speech. But um, this is going to be between two Terrans. We haven't had a couple of Terrans in a little while. Um, music, I just sort of turn that on and then off. I don't know if you guys like having the music on. If you do, let me know and I'll uh, actually put it on. I generally don't like having it on. But Anyway, back to the point. This is going to be between two Terrans. Haven't had any Terrans in a little while, but uh, this is going to be between one of the favourites of the uh, the Terrans, for me at least, is SC Foyu from the Foyu clan, and of course with uh, one of the, the, pretty much one of the Terrans you would think of if you were going to look to who has the, the probably up there in the best of the macro of uh, the Korean Terrans, you would look at SC. He is an absolute beast. Continues producing units no matter what he is doing. He could be uh, doing some drops, doing some tank pushes, making breakfast, ironing a t-shirt. Wait, you don't iron t-shirts, do you? I don't know. But, um, he could be doing all that and still be making units. This kid is absolutely insane. But his opponent up here in the top right of the Zolnaga Caverns is Gumio for you. He's, uh, of course, used to play random. A lot of people um, like that he played random. I loved seeing a random player in the GSL. Took down some uh, big players. I can't actually remember who they were, but did some really nice games against some certain uh, players. I believe it was mostly in the GSTL, now that I think of it. But um, he is uh, definitely a quality player. Has now essentially switched to Terran. I don't believe he plays uh, random anymore. Um, of course, there is that the, t the the various pros and cons of playing random. Of course, uh, relating to the fact that you could be um, until your opponent scouts you, you could you could be doing any sort of thing. You could be doing some crazy cheese. You could be doing some crazy uh, eco cheese, like a, a 15 nexus or something like that as a protoss. But the uh, other other side of that is is that generally random players are a lot better at their early game than they are with a late game for their each of their respective races. Of course, unless they have a favorite. But anyway, it's beside the point because he's not random anymore. He is Terran. Now, in the uh, Terran matchup, we have seen some various changes in the way that people go about their builds these days. You do see from time to time the uh, Iacoic build, a little bit like a Sky Terran uh, build, uh, sort of adding in a dash of Hellion every now and then just to spice things up and uh, get it nice and warm. Um, but, um, you know, we still do see a lot of this uh, standard uh, tank marine sort of build. And um, obviously a lot of players, actually a lot more than, than previously, have been mixing in Hellions, even in the tank marine styles. But as we can see here, Gumio is going straight for that factory. A marine is sitting here at the ramp trying to deny that SCV access. Gets it uh, almost uh, before it gets inside. I don't believe it actually saw that factory. So let's uh, have a quick look at exactly what it did see. Saw the... Uh, the uh, barracks there, almost forgot what it was called. Saw the racks and the reactor on that rack, so he's uh, going to predict that there probably may be some, um, perhaps some basic sort of tech, or perhaps um, a reaper, perhaps. You do see reapers from time to time, but now we do see that uh, SC is going to perhaps move out here. We do have three marines and an SCV. A Hellion comes out for Gumio. He's going to send that one down. Does not actually see that uh, that force moving in. I don't believe he's ready for this, but he will need to be ready because here comes the SCV taking all the damage. Does enough to take uh, that damage there. In fact, the marines get away with uh, no health uh, loss at all. So the Hellion, another Hellion comes out for Gumio, so he should be okay for the moment. Meanwhile, back at SC's base, the Hellion of Gumio actually goes straight down there and the SCV is coming out to repair it. Love seeing that sort of thing when you do have some SCVs just uh, running around chasing a uh, Hellion like it's some sort of uh, vigilante on a bike that's stolen some bread or something like that. It's quite funny when they're just chasing after it. But um, the Marines do a little bit of damage there. They took out just a tiny bit of uh, Gumio's forces. Obviously took down those few first Marines and uh, then took down a little bit more. In fact, let's have a quick look. He did actually get uh, one worker. But we do see that Gumio has actually uh, gotten two kills of his own against the workers of SC. So that's uh, that particular um, situation done for the moment here. We do have a Banshee on the way from Gumio, and we do see that a Viking is already prepared 
by SC here. As I said, he's a fantastic player. He's very much aware and ready of this. But we do see the two Hellions have gotten inside. One is a little bit damaged here. There isn't really too much to help defend against these for the moment. But the SCV is lining up there. They are absolutely asking to get roasted. And this, uh, this Hellion actually digging itself into the corner here. He's actually going to go down, but not before getting 10, maybe 11 kills. 11 kills, perhaps a few more. That Banshee did not get anything done here for uh, Gumio, and uh, as, a, as a fact of the, perhaps he was looking at a little bit too much of what that Banshee was doing. He has now lost 13 units down here. I believe that was all their CVs for SC, so he's done a brilliant job. In fact, it was 12 in total, so he killed 11 workers with uh, the Hellions, and uh, we do see that this uh, defensive force has done a fantastic job. Really no damage done here by that Banshee at all, so Gumiho is sitting in a little bit of a bad spot for the time being. Now, we see that SC is actually just supply cap for the moment. He's got one Rax just on the way, just ne uh, one supply depot, sorry, just on the way. There it is. It's going to be a little bit of a wall off there if anything um, a little bit annoying comes in the back from uh, Gumiho, but I don't think there is going to be anything like that. Hellion running into a little bit of trouble. Attack at a couple of Marines are just heading up the, through the left side of the map. The Hellion's going to have a quick look around. Sees that there's no, still no expansion just at the moment for SC, so both these guys are going to have to continue on this one base party for the moment, but the, the Hellion may get away. There may be just enough room. He does indeed get inside the uh, John the Translator common knowledge hallway, and in fact, he's actually come back out, so he's going to keep an eye on whether that expansion goes up. Speaking of expansions, we do see the command center is now switching into the orbital command here for Gumio at the moment, so he's going to be looking to uh, get that expansion going. It is going to be a bit of a problem here because we do see that SC is continuing to produce off this one base. There is no command center on the way, although this SCV looks like it's getting into position to make one. It is indeed. There it is. The command center going down whilst he is pushing. That is the SC way. And he's uh, going to start pushing up here. We do have eight Marines crowded around this one tank. But there is one bunker here ready to defend for the moment. But the tank is going to be coming up here. He does actually have siege mode. And I don't think Gumio does for the moment. No, he doesn't. Because he's been spending a little bit more perhaps on this orbital command. One tank is now in position. The second tank comes up through the, uh, through the natural air and gets into position. The Vikings are now in the sky claiming control of that orbital command. And they are not able. So they're just going to shoot away that thing. There is one Viking out for uh, Gumio at the moment. He does have the cover of the SCVs repairing it, but there are just way too many units for Gumio to actually uh, deflect this just for the moment. The Banshee, in fact, coming into the battle, and now the Marines are going to be able to do a lot of damage there. Gumio is starting to lose a lot of his forces. It looks as if he's uh, just not in any way prepared for this attack. The, com the Orbital Command, the second one that perhaps has cost him this game, has actually... Uh, jump back down to the ground. The tanks were going to come under fire from that Banshee, but the Vikings had uh, dealt with that quite easily. Now the two tanks that were causing a lot of damage have now walked inside. The Vikings are going to give them cover from the air, but there is really nothing to be worried about from the air anyway, because there are literally no more units left here for Gumio. He's going to send these SCVs into battle. Perhaps he may lose some of the SCVs, but he's definitely going to take these tanks down, and down they go. The tanks have been destroyed, but if we have a quick look, at the income tab, we will see exactly what is going on. Gumiho is in an absolutely horrible position for the uh, time being, and I don't think there is any way he's going to come back from this. But SC is uh, mining away on his two gas with the Raven out now. He will definitely be well protected against any sort of attack. It looks as if we did actually have a drop. My bad, I didn't actually notice that. But there's a GG from Gumiho. The Banshee coming inside and just uh, doing it. It's just not, it's way too much to try and defend if you've only got these two Marines out. And and obviously with his economy in absolute tatters. So Gubio is uh, the loser in our first game here in the FXO Invitational Series uh, Korean Qualifier. So we'll go into game two and we'll see what happens. Cheers.